That little piece there was my addition to uh, Ode to Joy. I'm having fun here playing with my metalophone. Now, I know you might think this is, looks like a xylophone, but actually xylophone and xylem and so forth, those are terms related to wood. And a xylophone actually is made out of these, instead of these pipes, you have the boards there that are made of wood, and then you have resonating tubes down below it. But this one right here is made out of metal, and it's a lot of fun to work with because you can make it yourself. It's very easy to do. As a matter of fact, it's made from pieces of electrical conduit. You find this at the hardware store, and it's amazing how the sounds are. In fact, it comes in pieces that are 10 feet long, or like this piece right here, which is about five feet long and you can buy different diameters and you get different sound tones to it. For example, let's take a look at one of these here. And the thing about it is in order to be able to make a tone, if you hold it like so, you're not gonna get a very good sound, more of a clunk, because your hand is in fact uh, dampening the sound, the vibrations. So instead, what I've done with this one right here is I've drilled a hole up at the top and I can suspend it. It's kind of like a wind chime actually. Then I take my mallet right here and just simply tap it and I get a very nice sound to this. And then I have another one which is a bigger diameter and uh, but same length and let's do that one too. And here we go. Make some, make some very nice chimes. Now the part about this though is that that's five feet long and you really want them much shorter to make, make it work for your metalophone. So what you need to do is also get a hold of a very handy tool. It's a pipe cutter. And you might think, oh, gee, that's it's not a complicated tool at all. It's quite easy, actually. And I'll show you how it works here. You simply slide it on. And by the way, this thing only costs less than $10. You slide it on there. It has a little bit of a sharp, hardened steel wheel, kind of like a pizza cutter. And all you do is tighten it on here and kind of squeeze it just a bit. Then you simply turn it around like so. And when it turns freely, you tighten it some more. And you go around again and tighten it some more. And almost right here. A little too tight. All right. And keep going. And right, almost ready. And you can measure this out at the length that you want. I'm cutting through the pipe here just by turning this thing. So each time I stop, I turn it a little tighter and cut the pipe off. So it's a really easy thing to use, a simple tool. It only costs about oh, under $10. So you can make a, a metal phone like this here for probably a total amount of cost of maybe, maybe $12, $15 plus the, the price of the, the cutter here. And you can make lots and lots of metal phones with this. Well, this is just a, another great demonstration of the idea of sound and vibration. And the difference in the, the, to the pitch of these things has to do with the length. Long ones have a lower sound, just like at a piano where you have the, the strings of the piano. The long, fat strings are the ones that have the low sound, the low pitch, and the short ones have the high pitch. And by tuning these just to the right length, you can get your scale. Well, that's one great little activity you can do with students, and actually you could have students make their own metalophones. And furthermore, since they're not actually attached, I mean physically attached with bolts or whatever on here, you can rearrange them and they can create a, a song if they want to. Let's do this here, and then they simply go from one into the other. So they can retune this thing any way they like. So it's a lot of fun to do that. So we'll put that aside right there, because there's other forms of tubes that you can use, and aluminum works very well. I had a, a wind chime that kind of fell apart, all the strings rotted, and of course the temptation is either to restring it, which I never have time for, or you can use the pipes here for your chimes that you can hang like this. So I took some string and went through the holes that were already pre-drilled and you still get some very nice sounds from it. And again, the length of this makes, makes all the difference in terms of the pitch. So we got two different lengths here as you can see. Well, let's get them lined up. There we go. And, and you can still recapture that beautiful sound that you get with your wind chimes. Well, now I've got a great little teaching tool the kids could play with and learn about the relationship between the pitch and the length of the, the tube. By the way, you might be wondering, where do you get these uh, mallets here? And um, a mallet is an easy thing to make. You can buy them, of course, but an easy thing to make. What you do is you go to your local craft store and they have things like this, bags of dolls, and they have bags of balls that have already been pre-drilled, which you have to match up the size here. But I've got one right there from the bag. It's got a hole drilled into it, 
and I've got my dowel and watch what happens here. I just stick it in there like this and jam it in and I've got a mallet. However, it's best if you can put a small drop of, of glue in there to make sure that it stays. So this is actually quite inexpensive and you can have every student make their own mallet if they want to. Well, I've got some other, other great little things that you can do here. And another one that's kind of fun is to use pieces of foam like I have here. And uh, well, let's start off with kitchen utensils, a couple of kitchen knives. Now, not every knife is equal. Some of them are made out of multiple pieces like this one right here. It actually has a, a lightweight core through there, so it's kind of a solid piece, and then it's hollow and so forth. And here's one that looks like it's made out of entirely solid materials. And let's listen to the sound here. Let's start with the one that has the, the hollow core in there. Not a very good sound to it, but that's part of the exploration process. Kids can try different things and try to analyze why the sound the way it is. But this one here is a solid one. Listen to this one. Almost like a chime. And there are other kitchen utensils that you can use. Here's a spoon, and this is one manufactured from one complete piece. This particular spoon, I have a string around it like this, and taking my mallet, I can simply do this and make a nice sound. But you can also do something else kind of fun. You can take it and hang it around a finger like this, and then simply press it against your ear so that the sound, when you hit the mallet, hit it, travels up through the string and then gets right into your ear and you get a little different tone to that. It's kind of fun. Now some things that you can do also would be to get a metal coat hanger and with a metal coat hanger you just have a loop of string, do the same thing, hang the hanger from it and then tap it with a pencil or with a mallet. And by the way, not all metal coat hangers are equal, so uh, some are thicker, some are thinner, and that makes a difference in the sound. However, if you get a metal coat hanger that has paper wrapped around, like sometimes you do from the dry cleaners, that paper tends to deaden the sound. It, it dampens it down so you don't get any sound at all. Great thing to have both, you know, a bare metal hanger and a paper one. Let's take a look at one more here. And this one right here on the table are nails. Nails from the harvest store. You can go out and buy a, you know, box of, a couple of boxes of nails of different diameters. And then I'm using just this foam, plastic foam here. And listen carefully, I'm going to tap each one. The reason for having it on foam is you don't want to dampen the sound. If I grab it like this, I don't get anything to speak of out of the sound. So I, by placing it on here, it gets free to vibrate and vibrate at its natural frequency. So let's try this here. Whoops. It's not very loud, but you can hear a nice little sound to it. Here's another one. A little lower. Comparing the nail. Long nail, a longer nail, and a shorter nail. The shorter nail has a higher pitch, and that one has a lower pitch. And let's kind of predict what's going to happen with this one. Will that be higher or lower pitch than the other two? And it's a lower pitch. So you can have a lot of fun with pieces of metal and try all kinds of things. You'd be surprised at all the things that have a very nice musical note when you are able to suspend them by a string or maybe on a piece of foam. They make some very nice sounds and you can produce a nice little metal orchestra with the kids. Have everybody make their own instrument out of metal. Well, that's it for now. And let's go back to play some music. So long.